Hi, I'm Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into the unit circle. What we're going to do is define what the unit circle is, then we'll determine how to figure out all the points along the circle, and then how to use those points to determine the sine, cosine, and tangent of various angles. Let's first off begin with what the unit circle is. What you have here is just an ordinary circle, and we have a triangle with one side being x, one being y, and one being r. Here you have a point that's on the circle, and its coordinates are x, y. So if you're wondering why I'm using all these different variables, that's because going across this way is x, going up this way is y, and then this just simply tells you how far you've moved. r represents the radius of the circle. This here would be an angle, and typically whenever you map an angle on a circle, you would start from here, the initial position, and you would cycle clockwise or counterclockwise. In this direction, that's a positive angle. You may recall that the cosine of any angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In this case, that would be x over r. Also, you may recall that the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. For this angle, the opposite side is y, so that would be y over r. One of the things about trigonometry is that the sine, cosine, and tangent work for all right triangles because they're all similar. So all triangles that have this right angle and this particular angle theta are going to have the same sine and cosine relationships. Because of that, the theory is this. You would take this triangle, in fact all the triangles, and shrink it so that the radius would then be one unit which essentially means that you're dividing everything by r. Dividing all the sides by r means that the hypotenuse of the triangle and the radius of the circle, in fact, we don't just shrink the triangle, you shrink the circle too. Doing so means that the radius of the circle is going to be 1. That's what unit means. Unit circle is a circle that has a radius of 1. Now, why do we do that? Well, here's why. When you look at it from this perspective here, let's again place our angle theta right there. Remember that it's the same angle. Since the cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, that would be x over r divided by 1, which is again just x over r, so you see that it's the same thing. Also recall that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, that would be y over r divided by 1 which means it's still y over r. So again, this one's also the same thing. You should also note that the coordinates of this particular point here is x over r comma y over r. And that's because we go across this amount, x over r, then you go up y over r, that amount. Because of that, you can hopefully see the correlation here. x over r matches with this. y over r matches with this. And because of that, since the radius is 1, we simply say that the cosine of the angle will equal to the x-coordinate for that point, and that the sine of the angle will equal to the y-coordinate of that point. So just simply knowing the coordinates on the circle is enough to give you the sine and the cosine for any angle mapped on the unit circle. Now that beats having to figure out the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Another big idea is that all the intercepts of the circle are at 1. That is, from the origin, if you venture out this way, you've gone 1 unit. So that's 1 comma 0 for the coordinate. Likewise up top, on the left, and on the bottom. Because of that, you can use the unit circle to help determine the values for the sine, cosine, and tangent of angles that are multiples of 90. And you can do it very easily. So let's say we were going to determine the cosine of 90 degrees. First thing you want to do is graph that angle. Recall that you always start over here on the right whenever you map an angle. The positive direction goes counterclockwise. Since the cosine is supposed to be just the x value, if you look at this coordinate here, 0 comma 1, we would only focus on the 0. Thus the cosine of 90 is 0. That's it. 
If instead of the cosine you wanted the sine of 90, well then you would look at the y coordinate. The y coordinate here is 1. So that would be your answer instead. Let's do a different angle. Let's say we're going to do 270 degrees and this time let's do tangent. Whenever you're given sine, cosine, tangent of any angle, the first thing you want to do is map out the angle. There we are. Notice the coordinates that we fall on, 0, comma, negative 1. Well, remember that the cosine is for the x value and the sine is for the y value. But for tangent, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. Thus, you'll need both values. You'll need the negative 1 and the 0. So that's negative 1 over 0 for the tangent, and since we have 0 in the denominator, it would be better to write undefined. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one in radians. Let's figure out the secant of 5 pi over 2. Now, if you're thinking in radians, here's what you'll want to keep in mind. 180 degrees is equal to pi. Therefore, if you take half of pi, you've only gone this far. Thus, if you've doubled that, you've gone 2 over 2 pi instead of 1 over 2. So that would be 3 over 2, and that would be 4 over 2. So if we count one more, we get to 5 over 2. So that's what we look at, and... 0 comma 1, remember that the secant is the reciprocal for cosine, so we're just going to focus on the 0, which is the x value. Okay, so the cosine is 0, but since we want the secant, we're going to need the reciprocal of 0. Technically, 0 is 0 over 1, so if you flip that over, what you get is 1 over 0. That means that the secant is undefined. Most of our friends find their home waters by sense of smell. Okay, so what about other angles? Well, you can figure out special angles. However, what you do with the unit circle is you need to come up with all the different coordinates and values around the entire circle and then use those coordinates to figure out the sine, cosine, and tangent, depending on what you're being asked. What you're seeing here are three different uh, lines here for three different angles, all starting from this uh, ray here. So the first angle, 30 degrees, would take us to the first ray. So we get this point right here. 45 degrees gives you this point here. And then the last one, 60 degrees, this point right here. And of course we mustn't forget 90 degrees. If you keep going past 90 degrees, the next angle would be 120. The reason why it's 120 is because of this angle here being 60 degrees. Remember, that's a special angle. This is referred to as a reference angle. A reference angle is an angle that's adjacent to the x-axis. So what we do is we try to figure out how much is remaining. Remember, all the way is 180. So once you figure out what's remaining, then you know the true angle here. So again, based on just 30, 45, and 60 degrees, you can get a myriad of angles. So the next one would be 135 degrees. then 150, then of course 180 which spans half the circle. If you were to continue on, your special angle being 30 degrees, if you tack that on you get 210. Note that the angle goes actually through the triangle and terminates right there at the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And the reason why is because we're always interested in where the angle terminates, which is right here along this line here. So that's your coordinate. Next is 225, followed by 240, and then after that 270. To finish off the rest using the 30, 45, and 60 triangles, you get 300, 315, and then 330. Okay, so how do we determine the coordinates of each of these points? Well, to do that, all we have to do is just simply count. Here are some tick marks that are aligned, at least on the x-axis, they're aligned with each of these points, more or less. Recall that the extreme coordinates 
are 1 comma 0 on the right hand side 0 1 up top negative 1 0 and 0 negative 1 we use 1 because again the unit circle means that the radius is 1 so we're not going to go beyond that so let's count off on these tick marks starting off with the first one so there you are 1 2 3 4 by the way the last one can't be 4 because remember the farthest out we go is 1 so take each of these values and divide them by 4 there you are now if you square root each of those fractions you'll get all the x values so the square root of 1 fourth is the square root of 1 over the square root of 4 that's 1 over 2 the square root of 2 over 4 well root 2 doesn't simplify so we simply leave it as root 2 and again the square root of 4 is 2 root 3 over 4 that's the square root of 3 which is just root 3 over root 4 which is again 2 root 4 over 4 is just the square root of 1 which is again 1 so there you are for your x values so how about those y values well we essentially do the same thing you got tick marks that are going vertical here so you number those 1 2 3 put those each over 4 and then root them and what you'll get are these same exact values only in reverse order so therefore for the 3 that's the square root of 3 over 2. For the 2, that's root 2 over 2, so we get the same thing twice for that one. For the 1, it's just 1 over 2. Again, same values in reverse order. So there you have it. So what about these other points? To get these ones, it's the same values again, except the x values are all on the negative side. So therefore, you just simply stick a negative in front of each value. Down here it's on the negative side for the vertical axis so all the y values change to negative. And then down here both are negative. That's it. That's how you fill in your unit circle. So let's say you were to determine the cosine of 60 degrees. Recall that 60 degrees goes from here up to here. Since the x value is, is cosine and the y value is sine, all you're interested in is this fraction. So one half is your answer. How about we try another one? This time let's determine the sine of 210. 210 is of course more than 180 degrees, which is halfway around. So if you think about it, how much more beyond 180 is it? If you were to take 180 and subtract from 210, you'd get 30 degrees, which is this first piece here. Since it's the sign that we're interested in, we're only talking about the y-coordinate, recall? Thus, negative one-half is your solution. Okay, let's do one last more. A tangent of negative 120 degrees. Recall that a negative angle goes in this direction here. Now negative 120 is of course more than, is going to go past 90 degrees, so about right there. And if you're wondering how we know it's there, it's again because of the reference angle. The reference angle is 60 degrees because remember 120, how much more do you need to get to 180? That would be 60. So that's how you know that you're going out to this particular one here. Recall that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So in this particular case, we're going to need both the x and y values. So that's negative three, root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Now before you panic and go, oh no, dividing fractions, I can't do that by hand. Yes, you can. All you have to understand about it is this. If you're going to take this fraction and divide by the other one, notice that both have 2 in the denominator. They will reduce out. So all you really have to preoccupy yourself about is the negative root 3 and the negative 1. So there you are. Then all you got to do is just simply simplify this fraction. Negatives simply become positive. Anything over 1, you just simply get the numerator. So the square root of 3 is your answer. What? Then I could go to Japan and back. You're kidding me. 
amazing.